Hi, this is Arndt from Königsmark, and uh, this time I'd like to show you a new plugin which is called the My IES Designer, which uh, eases the creation of your own IES files to control how light is emitted from light sources in Cinema 4D or any other software that can handle IES files. For instance, uh, many external renderers can also use IES files. As you can see here, the um, interface is quite cleaned up. So basically, you just control um, the opening angle of the light source. And you can also control the size of the light source. And this can be an angle that is above 90 degree, but normally if you deal with the spots, it will be a little bit less. Um, as you can see here, the cone itself can be divided into several parts, if you like to, or you can just stick to um, a light sort source that is uh, emitting light evenly within the given cone. Um, if you have such uh, separations inside the cone, you can decide to have a covered central part or to have it open. Uh, you can also add additional spike rays. Um, quite handy if you have uh, a light source near a uh, wall or on a ceiling. You sometimes see these, see these uh, stripes of light coming from that light source. And um, yeah, basically you can control the amount of light emitted within the cone or also the amount of light emitted around uh, the light source. This is handled by creating a spline, as you can see here. This is a new spline object. And from here you can, if you like to, move the given points. They are moved as if they are attached to rails or so there's some clipping or some restriction to them. So you can just move them around and the bigger the distance is from a point to the center, the larger or the more intense the light will be in that direction. So quite easy to control how much light is emitted from the center point. So when you're done with this, you just um, save a file. I already have an IES here, so I replace it and add a light source switch it over to be an IES file and within the photometric tab you just load that created IES file and you can see that here is the resulting pattern already. By default the light source is pointing towards the Z direction so to get the same light pattern, we have to rotate it around and you can see here is exactly what we defined by moving the spline po points around. And uh, if we rotate this a little bit further and move the light towards the wall, you can see that here you get this stripe pattern which is also gives a nice touch to some of the uh, designer lights you can see. Of course the size and amount of stripes can be controlled from within the dialog. So the other possible thing you can do is uh, not to use the spline but to use uh, the curves. So let's say you like to control the intensity not with these uh, cones and spikes, but by a curve. You can do this as well. So I'm opening up this in a separate window. You can see that this curve defines the uh, amount of light emitted 
from the center, which is the left side towards the edge of the given cone angle, which is the right side here. So maybe I'm opening up the slide a little bit more. Of course, it can also be a light that is really emitting 300 degree around. And uh, with this fall off, you can add a little bit more of a softness. And also, um, which is maybe even more interesting, we can control the amount of light emitted around, or horizontally around the light source. So just by adding additional points, and I'm flattening out the tangents here. No, come on. Like this. We get just some areas um, around the, the positive y-axis, as you will see in a second, that emit light and some larger area around um, the light sound that doesn't emit anything. Um, for this, and this is how IES files work, you can uh, add a definition, especially for the horizontal values, if you need really soft transitions between the uh, given intensity values. It makes sense to increase the uh, subdivisions a little bit more. And after that is done, it's the same thing again. You can create the spline, you save the IES file, replace it, load it again, and here you are. You can see that actually the light is just emitted in a small area around the light source. Similar to a spot, but it's a more three-dimensional spot now, as you can really control, fine-tune very precisely in which direction you like the light source to emit light and also control the intensity, for instance. It's also no problem to have something maybe like this, where the light emitted along the z-axis is reduced to zero and then it increases intensity. And I'm taking away the rail curve here for a minute. So switching this over to create a spline, save the IES data, res just replacing the old one, reloading this one. And now you can see they have nice effects like this one, where you can have a dark area right below the light source and then something that emits from there even more interesting maybe to see if we have this light source in a room, something like this. You can see that we get this nice effect that it's really behaving more like a ring light than a point light. So something like this is quite easy to achieve and basically to design the light you just need for your interior scenes, especially or for some special effects lighting. So I hope you like this concept. I think it's quite easy to control, so shouldn't take too long to get familiar with this. And yeah, thanks for watching.